Hello friends, I'm Harold Halfdane and welcome to Archaeological Minecraft. In this series, we'll be using Minecraft to talk about archaeology. As a former archaeologist who also enjoys Minecraft, I thought it would be fun to merge the two and try and replicate archaeological sites, structures, monuments, and principles. Hopefully, you will find it interesting and maybe it will inspire you in your own Minecraft world. In today's episode, we will be talking about Souterrains. The name Souterrain comes from the French and means underground. It can also refer to an underground passage, a basement, or is sometimes called a cave despite being man-made as opposed to a naturally occurring cave. They're found throughout Western Europe and broadly date to the late Iron Age to early medieval period or roughly 600 AD to 1200 AD. Their usage appears to be unrelated to burials, but they're used for either a larder or a place of refuge during conflict. A larder, incidentally, is a place to store dry goods and foods in a more temperature controlled and moisture controlled environment. In other words, a basement storage location that's cool and dry. Kind of like what you'd want in Minecraft. Whether souterrains were a larder or a place to hide, I think both could be the case. And I could see where souterrains could be used as a storage location most of the time and for a place to hide during a raid. Often in Ireland, souterrains are associated with ring forts or cashels. So early medieval and uh, ring forts or, or earthen, earthen surrounded uh, homesteads and cashels or stone surrounded homesteads, uh, both of which we'll probably be talking about in later episodes. But sometimes uh, souterrains seem to be unassociated with any other archaeological site. In other words, sometimes when you archaeologically find a ring fort or cashel, uh, you find a souterrain around them or within them. Other times it seems the souterrain is by itself in the landscape and isn't connected with any ring fort. It's possible that their entrances were hidden or obscured in antiquity when they were in regular use. So a little story, once when I was working on an archaeological site in Ackle Island helping excavate a medieval site uh, on Mount Sleevemore as a medieval village. We spent the afternoon walking all around the hills of Mount Sleevemore, the, uh, the the landscape, looking for a Sioux train, which we knew where it was there. We knew that because during World War II, the coastline all around in, on Ackle was patrolled, and during that, they had uncovered uh, the uh, the army or whoever was patrolling had uncovered a Sioux train, uh, which was un uh, undiscovered. It was unknown uh, up at that point. And, and so it was logged and many from the community had gone out and seen it. And so uh, coincidentally, the, the person uh, while I was there who, who happened to own the, the pub, which we often frequented um, after, after our, our day of excavations, who, who grew up on, on Ackle, when he was a boy, he had gone out and, and had viewed that Sioux train. So we knew it was there out in the landscape, but uh, it just, we, we searched all day long uh, and, and couldn't, couldn't find it at all. So sometimes they, they're very problematic to find. There's also been instances of Sioux trains which have been found in antiquity. We have archaeological drawings of them of people when, when they discovered they created, but have subsequently been lost uh, or, or their locations have, have been lost to, uh, to history. And so while we know there may be a Sioux train in the area, uh, it, it now can't be found as well. So let me paint the rough historical picture. You're a farmer in the late Iron Age, early medieval age Ireland, living in your ring fort, some Vikings or your neighbors, uh, or perhaps later the Normans are raiding in your area, it might be a good idea to hunker down in a hidden Sioux train for a time where you'll be hard to find and where you'll have a cache of foodstuffs and wait out the emergency. Now that we've talked about Sioux trains in general and laid some context, hopefully not too boring the context, hopefully you're all still here, let's talk about the Sioux train I reproduced in Minecraft which incidentally is hidden right behind me, right over my head there, right over my shoulder. And that Sioux terrain is the Finnish Sioux terrain. 
which let's go up to the chalkboard. Finisu Terrain is also known as Binder's Cove. It is probably originally named Binder's Cave. If you recall from earlier in the episode, I talked about how Sioux Terrains are oftentimes called uh, colloquially uh, caves. So probably uh, Binder's Cove was originally named Binder's Cave. But uh, the formal name for it is the Finnis Sioux Terrain. If we look at the map, we can see here's Ireland. Here's Northern Ireland. Incidentally, this is Ackle Island right here. So this is Mount Sleevemore. This is where we walked around looking for the Sioux Terrain. But you can see from the red dot, the Finnis Sioux Terrain is located in County Down, Northern Ireland, south of Belfast by a little bit. You can see that there's the red dot there. It dates to around the 9th century AD, so about 800 to 900 AD, uh, although that's an estimate. It's hard to, hard to date Sioux terrains exactly. Oftentimes there aren't archaeological artifacts found in the Sioux terrains. Sometimes they could be dated really precisely if there's wood that could be uh, either radiocarbon dated or, or leveraged with dendrochronology or tree ring rate dating, which also may be another subject we talk about in later episodes. As I was saying earlier, used for cool, dry storage, place of refuge. So let's go see. So we'll go over here and check out the Sioux terrain, which I've hidden over here. Let's go down into the Sioux terrain. The Sioux terrain's main passage is 30 meters long, which has two main passages on the north side, each of which are six meters long. It also has a little nook. I've expanded it maybe a little too much here, but about a meter or so, more like a, a little shelf um, right, right around the entrance. But about six meters off the main, the main uh, passage here, to the on the north side are, are two two main passages. So thirty meters long in total, curving slightly to the uh, south. So not exactly true north. So true north would be around that direction. So not exactly east west north south, but you can see. I've tried to copy the wall material. So the wall material of the Sioux terrain or the Finnish Sioux terrain was made of, of granite. So in, specifically it was cobbled granite, although Minecraft doesn't have cobbled granite. So I textured it a little bit with some 1.19 items as well as some, some granite. Uh, the modern floor is gravel, although it might've been more packed earth in historical times. Each of the six meter areas opens to a slightly larger chamber, although each of the passages, whether it's the main passage or any of these side passages, are only about a meter wide and about a meter to a meter and a half tall. So in Minecraft terms, so you're having to crouch the whole way through the Sioux terrain. The ceiling are, I use stone slabs to replicate what the ceiling is in around the, 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 the true Finnis Sioux terrain, which is, is more like stone lintels, which, which span the distance. So even now, uh, and, and back then likely as well, very cool, very dry place, despite the fact that we're underground. So in the modern Sioux terrain, like in Minecraft where you have to crouch, you'd have to be on hands and knees to walk through this. While there is no evidence of this in the Finnis Sioux terrain, in other Sioux terrains, there's evidence of hidden openings or passages, obstructions, uh, and potentially small traps as well. So as we walk through the Sioux terrain, you can see that some, some of the chests and barrels I made obvious, others I've obscured. Maybe you've observed some of them as we've been walking along. As you think about how you may want to incorporate the concept of a Sioux terrain in your own Minecraft world, 
I think there are a number of great possibilities. For example, the location could be fairly well obscured like I did with the hillside here, or on a plane where only a very lucky passerby would stumble upon your hidden storage area. And even if they do, you could protect it with various dispenser traps, which could be triggered through a tripwire or skulk sensor from the noise of someone opening a chest or a barrel. Uh, they're not going to set it off, obviously, crouching, but the first time they would open a barrel, they would create some sound that a skull sensor could hear. Also, remember that because the height of a suit terrain is low enough that another player won't be able to dodge, attack, or really escape quickly because they're crouching or potentially crawling, you, uh, they're vulnerable to your attacks. You could easily design your suit terrain so that there's only one high, uh, one block high, not one and a half block high areas. So maybe you would carry a trap door on, on your person where the person attacking you might not have a ready trap door where you could be shooting them with arrows. The other thing to consider is that maybe you could have an ender porter in the back so when they trigger your skulk sensor or a tripwire, it would teleport you back to the suit terrain so you know it's, it's under attack from or, or being disturbed from some other player. Well, that's it for today's episode. I hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit about this type of archaeological site and how you might be able to incorporate it or be inspired by it in your Minecraft world. If you want to know more about suit trains in general, I would recommend a book named The Suit Trains of Ireland by Mark Clinton. And if you want to see what the finnish suit terrain looks like in real life, I've linked a video from another YouTuber who filmed their visit to the finnish suit terrain, which I have linked below in the description. If you liked the episode or have any feedback, I would appreciate it if you'd leave a comment below as I'm new to YouTube and I'd really like to know how I can improve or let me know what you liked so I can deliver the best possible content I can. Thanks and bye for now.